Hello, I'm Scott Brown with Green Wind and other home energies. I've tied a piece of wire around the box end of my wrench so it'll stick real good. There you go. On these two, I've already counted 16 turns, and i got to bring these other two down there. It leaves me about that much space uh, between the top of the displacer uh, and pressure chamber and the top of my vise. There we go, 16 turns. And you got to bring all four of these sides down evenly, or you might run a risk of bending your displacer rod, which is not very good. There we go. You see it one more time. I'll show you how it just sticks there. Makes it easy to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. We're going to put three more on here. Now that they're all even, we're starting over. So we go one, two, and three. And I'm looking underneath and see how close I am to the Sterling engine. And I'm going to speed this video up here. That's why we're using a regular narration right now rather than talking straight off the camera. So I really don't want to run too much time and bore you to death. Uh, I look at these videos half time. I'm pretty bored. <laughs> anyway, the can off to the right is a Big Tex grapefruit juice can. It's the same diameter as the outside of the pressure chamber. And I might make one more out of that. But I'll need two of those cans. And then uh, I'll probably use some uh, Dinty More Beef Stew cans. I believe they fit just inside it. And I'm going to use a longer stroke on the displacer on this one. It's going to make it run a lot slower. But it will have more torque in the long run. Okay, center it up a little bit. And now we're going down to running one turn on each because I'm touching the top of the uh, Sterling engine right now. If you don't come down even, it squeezes the the can will contort. You uh, once you uh, take a can, you'll notice that when you squeeze it on the sides, the other sides pooch out, and it kind of gets the bottom will actually warp a little bit. So if you're trying to push this down by hand, and you got sharp edges, and you're pushing down on one side just a little bit harder than the other, you run a risk of running your hand down with all that pressure that you're pressing there and you can actually uh, cut yourself fatally <laughs> so I, I suggest using a press not trying to use your hand because getting these uh, ridges to go inside each other you're playing with steel that doesn't want to expand and the other one doesn't want to contract much you need a lot of force now these bolts I've got on here are sitting uh, pretty far out away from the dis uh, displacer and pressure chamber um, this uh, means my wood uh, runs a risk of splitting down the middle from the force. Well, I've used pretty thick wood, and it's not plywood though, it's regular 1x10 or 1x12 maybe. It's not plywood, it's uh, just regular straight wood. Came off the bottom of a shelf unit that I decided to level up and uh, shorten a little bit. The thing here is uh, this is kind of bending a little bit. And one and we did the last turns with the camera showing a nice close up of what's happening underneath. Okay, as you can see right here, that's where this top part's fitting into the bottom part, which is flared out. This edge right here is gonna come all the way down to here. And it's gonna take a few turns. So we'll do the first one one, second one one. This gets much easier here. You want to make sure that edge is even all the way around when you get down to this point. If it's not, then you messed up somewhere or you got a bolt that's longer than the other one. Oops. There we go. One on this one. This little press is uh, inexpensive. 
to some. Two or three dollars is quite a bit. But just keep in mind you can use it over and over. Seems like this side is not coming down as fast. So I'm going to bring this side down another turn. Maybe the wood was warped. Oh, she's warping. Press. Put more over here. Getting there. <clears throat> Press down on the wheel. Like I said, I might have made this one a little wide. That side's coming down. That's good. And we come back around. And now she has pressed in and it's made it to that groove. And it's the same all the way around. Now you can take your bolts off. And now you have your sterling engine. In this little groove down here, we're going to stick some super glue. And that ought to straighten her up. And on the outside, you can take a little Permatex if you want because it's high heat. Silicon gasket sealer. And. Now your displacer and pressure chamber is all done. All right, we got the nuts and washers off and the top off, and here's our Sterling engine displacer and compress. There we go. Set that over right here. And all we want to do is take the super glue and stick it right along this edge, right along here, and that'll seal it right up. <coughs> Alrighty, so I'm going to kind of tip it sideways and leave that edge down. I'm going to put my super glue right on the edge here. Oops, took to the wrong piece. That's alright, that's what the teriyaki stick is for. I'll guide it into the crack. Once I got it into the crack, it'll, uh, you can just basically go all the way around. And it'll keep on staying in the crack. Get to the piece on the top. There we go. And around. If I got any drips, I'll just go ahead and guide them in. There we go. I should fill up all that space. A little more right here. It seemed to find its way down there. Believe me, it'll seek out every crack and crevice it can find, just like oil will. Does a wonderful job of sealing it up. It'll last under some heat. I'll give you a little pointer while we're at this. When you run a Sterling engine, sometimes you're using wax and the wax runs out or starts to melt all the way. At that point it's on the edge of boiling and when it gets to the edge of boiling it'll vaporize a little bit and it can catch fire just like a can of gasoline. Very dangerous. Never walk away from a Sterling engine. I need some more super glue and we'll finish up. You see how to get it in there. All the way around. Looks like it did make it all the way around. Let's like see it shine. Very good. Okay, and there's your displacer compression chamber uh, finished up. The rest, whether you want to drill a hole on the side for your piston or up on the top, and the rest of it's framework and cam and shafts.